The critics of a potential Live Nation concert venue in Portland will air out their concerns to City Council today. Coming up, why local musicians and developers are not on the same page. For almost a week, Boeing Union machinists have been on strike. Today, the union president stops by in their support. Plus. And it's official Portland is once City. again getting a WNBA team and they're set to tip off in 2026. Coming up, we'll chronicle the years it's taken to bring the WNBA back to the Rose City Sunrise. Starts right now. Good morning and thank you for joining us on your Thursday here. So many fun things to talk about. We got events, we got yeah. WNBA, we got Ashley Grahams on the desk with us. Uh, we're going to head over to Chris in a second with some traffic, but first a look yeah. at the weather. Uh, a repeat of yesterday, except for the fact that uh, yesterday the sun afternoon forecast didn't quite pan out for a lot of us. We will give it the old college try once again today. Morning cloud cover right there over the Rose City. Not seeing reports of any moisture coming out of those clouds. Remember yesterday we had two, three hours, pretty solid drizzle out there. 60s, the number out the door out at PDX. Most of you are in the 50s this morning. At right, lunchtime, still some cloudiness around 65 degrees. And then if we get the sunny blue later today, we'll pop it up to around 73 for a high. Here's Chris. All right, Rod, let's get you out the door. Quick look at the roads. The Sylvan Hill getting busier on Highway 26, but so far no problems on that side of the town. The Banfield's still pretty wide open in I-5 down near Wilsonville rolling right along. So the freeway drive into town is in pretty good shape. Heads up, though, in Polk County it's just getting word of what ODOT's calling uh, hazardous vegetation probably means down trees here on Highway 51 just north of the Independence area. The road's still open, but just be on the lookout for some local slowing there and a big closure in Troutdale. Of course, in case you hadn't heard the uh, Stark Street Bridge closed a couple of days ago. The county Multnomah County reporting that there was a partial collapse of a support wall. Engineers have got to go check that out and come up with a fix. So in the meantime, the Stark Street Bridge is closed. Your traffic solution, the Sandy River Bridge. Ladies. Chris, thanks for looking into that for us. Our top story at six. Boeing announced that it will furlough some employees temporarily. They say the decision is meant to preserve cash during an ongoing machinist strike. Those workers have been on picket lines across the Northwest for close to a week, including in Gresham. And that's where we find Thomas Schultz this morning. Good morning, Thomas. Hey, good morning, guys. And yeah, as you can see, there's workers striking right now. Again, this is a 24 hour long strike been going on almost a week now. Now back to these furlough days. Boeing says they'll impact tens of thousands of workers, both hourly and sourly. And Boeing says that workers will be impacted one week of every four. And that'll happen as long as this strike persists. Now this comes as machinists are asking for a 40% wage increase and the reinstatement of pensions, which Boeing nixed back in 2014. Last Friday, 30,000 workers walked off the job. More than 1,000 of those employees are here at the Gresham facility. And today, Machinist and Aerospace Workers Union President Brian Bryant will be in Gresham supporting these workers. Now, our sister station up in Seattle caught up with him earlier this week, and he says it's time for Boeing to reward these employees. They've sacrificed their wages. They've sacrificed their pension. They've sacrificed on their health insurance. Enough is enough. They need to be respected for the work that they do for the Boeing company. And that's the sentiment we've heard from workers all week long, dating back to last Friday. Now back here live in Gresham, you can see, I mean, the signs and the tent that these workers have had up going on since last Friday. I mean, once again, a 24 hour long strike. These guys are out here all day long going on seven days now. Now, Boeing, in a statement released last Friday, says that it's clear to them that the tentative agreement they reached with the union leadership did not suffice for these workers, though they say that they are committed to finding a resolution that both sides can agree on. Guys? Thomas Schultz and Gresham. Thank you, Thomas. Well, a Multnomah County jury has awarded a Portland cyclist more than $1.5 million following a crash with a TriMet driver. Ken Flippin says that he was in southeast Portland's Brooklyn neighborhood when the driver of a TriMet SUV hit him in a crosswalk. Flippin sued for or TriMet for negligence, claiming that the driver who ran him over failed to stop for him, pay attention to his surroundings, or maintain control over his vehicle. Ran me over, and I screamed, stop, you're going to kill me. And he stopped right on time, backed off me, and when he backed off me, my leg had caught the bumper and it ripped my leg apart. 
attorney for TriMet argued Flippin was at fault for riding his e-bike on the sidewalk and in the opposite direction of traffic. Ultimately, a jury sided with Flippin and awarded him $1.5 million after video from his GoPro showed that at the time of the accident, he was crossing in an intersection where drivers are required to yield. There's a new controversy surrounding Portland City Commissioner and candidate for mayor Carmen Rubio. Last week, the Oregonian reported on her 150 parking and traffic violations and having her license suspended six times. Well, now it appears that the commissioner has new traffic troubles. The Oregonian is reporting Rubio scraped the bumper of a Tesla while parking her SUV last Friday. She was recorded on video checking for damage, then walking away. The owner of the Tesla turned up a short time later, spotted a scrape to the bumper and wheel rim, and says that she left a note on Rubio's dash. Long story short here, the two reportedly talked on the phone and Rubio apologized, though here's where it gets murky. Apparently, there was some back and forth over whether Rubio would pay the Tesla owner directly or go through insurance. In a statement here, Rubio told us in part, quote, she meaning the Tesla owner, went on at length about the kind of person she believed me to be and indicated again that people should know the kind of person I am. Rubio went on to say that the driver implied that she would go to the media. Rubio said that she was concerned that she was being exploited. It now appears that the matters will be handled by Rubio's insurance. KGW is working to contact the Tesla owner and has asked the Rubio campaign for an on-camera interview. A Live Nation concert venue in Portland's Central East Side is one step closer to becoming a reality. Prosper Portland, the city's economic development agency, has voted to sell a plot of land near Southeast Salmon and Water Avenue to developers. They plan to build a venue that can hold up to 3,500 people that would be operated by Live Nation. Developers say a venue of that size would fill a gap in the city, but opponents worry Live Nation will be bad for local artists. The question today is, does the construction and operation of a Live Nation venue in the city of Portland demonstrate a clear public benefit? The answer is simply no. Their responsibility is to shareholders, states and oceans away. Our public benefit is not their objective. In the central city need wins and we need investments. We are in front of you today presenting a project which is just that, a major investment in our city and a win for our city. Opponents are formally appealing the land use approval. City Council is set to hear arguments later this afternoon. Now to Washington. The city of Battleground has lifted its recreational burn ban. Back in July, the city restricted all outdoor burning, including outdoor fireplaces and cooking with charcoal. Now the city says the risk of wildfire danger has dropped because of recent cool temperatures and rain. Oaks Parks Oktoberfest kicks off tomorrow in Portland. Okay. It'll feature all the Oktoberfest essentials, including live music like you're hearing there, dancing, and of course, German food and beer. There's also activities for the kiddos and even wiener dog races. And if that is not enough for you, you can also hop on the Oaks Park amusement rides. The event is happening tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday at Oaks Park. For more information on hours and ticketing, head over to oakspark.com. Doesn't that music just make you want to Watch dance. the sound of music. So I don't know how I dance to that, but I just want to do one of these. I, well, I was swaying myself. Okay, swaying so time. we're here. I was literally doing the exact same. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, cloudy skies. A marine deck in over the Rose City this morning seems to be pretty solid this hour. The view from the Wells Fargo Tower camera. That's holding us at 60 out along the Columbia River. Uh, we have light winds. Most of you are in the 50s. Hillsboro 48, Battleground 47. West Lynn, though, 50. 58, Tiger 54, Salem 53, not seeing reports of any significant fog and not seeing any reports of Mr. Drizzle. Which, remember yesterday it was quite wet in some spots. So as far as I know, it's all dry out there at this hour. Our future cast model, here we are at 9 o'clock, showing the low clouds in gray from Astoria, Longview, down the valley, Portland into Salem. And then holding on, especially near downtown Portland, off to the east side and up into Vancouver of uh, low clouds at noon. And it's always somewhat of a guessing game with a light northwest wind as to whether everybody clears out or not. Yesterday that didn't happen. We'll see if it happens today. Temperatures on this map assume that we get afternoon sun and they show low 70s in Portland at 5 o'clock, 75 in Eugene, Albany and Salem, 60s at the coast, mid 70s out in the Dalles, mostly sunny central and eastern Oregon today for another beautiful day. Winds in the gorge still westerly, 
They went from gusting to 40 something two days ago to gusting generally to 25 yesterday and today the winds in the gorge expected to be generally west 10 to 20. Uh, here's a look at our seven day forecast. So the big headline here is mainly dry, if not all dry. Temperatures in the 70s through your weekend of the autumnal equinox 543 AM Sundays, the official start of the fall season. We're still showing this guy a sunny 85 degree Tuesday. Then there's a cool down Wednesday with a shower threat. We could actually warm back up into the 80s after that next week. So we'll see. That's your forecast on a Thursday morning. Thank you, Ron.